Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India students welcome to swayam prabha the course title is principles of marketing and the lecture title is distribution decision part 1 this is module 12 lecture 1 i am dr shoma sen gupta associate professor commerce kamla nehru college university of delhi in this lecture we will cover the following topics channel of distribution types and functions delivering value factors affecting choice of distribution channel and distribution strategies functions of distribution channel distribution channel or the intermediary they perform different functions for the manufacturer and for the consumer so they are very beneficial and they facilitate the trade between the manufacturer and consumer so the first function they perform is procurement and sorting they procure supplies of goods from different sources or from different manufacturers uh, depending upon whether they are wholesalers or retailers they sort the gra and grade the goods and pack them in the required lots so this is a service they do for the manufacturer as well as it is beneficial for the consumer second function is accumulation they undertake accumulation of goods into larger homogeneous stock and maintains continuous flow of the supply of goods allocation and packing in convenient lots is the second, uh, third function they buy in bulk and repack in small lots although we are repeating this we have uh, discussed it in under sorting also so uh, that becomes convenient for the customer to buy then uh, another function is matching that is assortment difference between between products manufactured and the combination desired by customer is there you know that now uh, middleman procures from different sources and delivers them in combinations desired by the customer so if they want a combination of products then middleman makes sure that they make a lot and give it to the consumer sell it to the consumer so that again uh, adds to the convenience to the consumers next function is risk taking they bear the risk account of price and demand fluctuations spoilage change in fashion theft etc another function is promotion they window display demonstrate distribute the samples or trials and in that manner they promote the product dealers also push the product to the customers whenever uh, they they get some kind of allowances or benefits from the manufacturer they push the products to the or persuade the customers to buy the product also price negotiation is another function they negotiate price quality guarantee etc with customers on behalf of the manufacturer for their products also they provide credit facility um, uh, to the resellers or consumers uh, depending upon uh, who they are whether they are wholesalers or retailers advances and loans are also given to the producers or financing is done by the wholesaler to the manufacturer especially small producers who cannot produce until and unless they get some advance or some loan so that is also facilitated by the middleman next function is pricing uh, they help manufacturer in fixing the pricing prices they give all kind of information uh, to the manufacturer about uh, about the condition of the target market the economy as well as the competitors prices accordingly the manufacturer fixes fixes the prices also they maintain price stability by keeping their overheads low low and uh, through competition so uh, they maintain price stability also then information is another thing which time and again we are saying that they collect and disseminate market research information about customers competitors and trends and provide it to the manufacturers contact is maintained by them they find and communicate the prospective buyers 
physical possession also they take they store and move products at successive stages and they bear the risk of uh, possessing the product also next function is title they helps in transfer of ownership and diffuses the risk uh, uh, another function is helps in production takes over the problem of marketing and distribution so the manufacturer can concentrate on production only and finally creation of utilities we know that uh, they ensure right distribution and create time and place utilities and also increases the value of the products importance of distribution channel decision now once you have uh, created a channel of distribution you have to carry it on for a long period of time because it is built on a long term relation on the basis of long term relationships and you cannot uh, just scrap one channel of distribution and move to another channel of distribution because it's a long term relationship of trust and uh, uh, honesty so uh, uh, you have to take great care in building the channel of distribution also costs are involved and uh, if there are hiccups then uh, you cannot supply the goods on time to the a uh, customer so this is a very important decision channel of distribution and it should be created with great care so first thing is that it influences other marketing mix variables you know that uh, all the each of the marketing mix variable have an impact on all others so where you are positioning the product will uh, decide everything right from the product quality to the price to the place to the um uh, to the promotion to the place or physical distribution um, decision so this is element of marketing mix and it is interrelated and interdependent on all other marketing mix variable choice of channel influences and inf is influenced by other elements like product price and promotion this is part of price also you know that cost of channel enters into the price which is ultimately borne by the consumer so avoid any wrong uh, choices because that will increase the distribution cost and it will affect the demand because the price will increase and the customer may not buy the product it has a long term implication channel selection involves long term commitment great care should be taken to build long term healthy relation with the channel members choice of distribution channel influences sales volume and profits of the marketer so great care should be taken while selecting the channel degree of channel control also depends upon uh, what type of channel you have selected if the choice of channel is proper fluctuations in production may be reduced manufacturer can ex exercise control making products available to consumers at the right time and right place is again possible if you have selected the best channel channel decision determines where and when the product will be available to the consumers the next important heading is factors affecting cho choice of distribution channels now as i have said time and again that it depends upon the type of the product the market condition the competition uh, the company's uh, financial condition which decides what type of channel they will select so we will discuss these considerations one by one the first one is market consideration now first we have to see whether it is a consumer market or a market or a industrial market the purpose of buying influences the channel selection like in case of industrial or commercial purpose if it is there then direct channel or through agents will be a better channel in case of consumer goods you can have a longer channel through middlemen like wholesalers and retailers then the number of potential customer if large number of potential buyers are there then it is better to go through middlemen if small group of buyers are there then you can go for direct channels then the size of the order if the orders are of big lots then direct channels should be used and small quantities are ordered through middlemen another is buying habits of the customers the amount of time and effort customer is willing to spend in shopping uh, that will determine the uh, channel size less time and effort than through middlemen 
more time is there uh, then you can go for direct marketing geographical concentration of market is another factor customers located in a particular geographical region concentrated there then direct channel if they are spread over the whole country then indirect channel or middleman should be used the next consideration is product consideration so channel of distribution also depends upon the type of the product first of all what is the unit value of the product if the products are of low unit value and of common use then you can use middlemen um, example for stationery cosmetics soaps or low price products for that you can have longer channel if the product is expensive consumer goods or industrial products then direct channel is used like for example jewelry or machines if you have to sell you can uh, have a direct channel Be because you can only better explain that and also the safety of the product is important then uh, product line if the firm is producing a wide range of products so it is better they, they open their own outlets if the firm is having only one or two products then through middlemen perishability is another consideration for uh, perishable products shorter channels are used then standardization of the product whether it is customized or non standardized product and uh, non standardized product short channels can be or direct selling for uh, can be a, a better or uh, standardized and branded goods for that you can have middlemen technical nature of the product products of technical nature requiring demonstration installation after sale service direct or shorter channel should be used for uh, consumer goods or fast moving consumer goods longer channels or through middlemen can be used bulk and weight is another factor heavy and bulky products through direct channels example iron and steel coal bricks they are sold through direct channels age of the product new products need greater promotional efforts and few middlemen old products longer channels so these are the product considerations third is the company consideration the company strength company's working will also decide the channel of distribution the volume of production big manufacturer with wide range of products own sales force of or outlet small manufacturers with single or few products wholesalers or retailers financial resources large firms with sufficient funds through own retail shops small firms with limited funds will have to depend on middlemen experience and competence of the management firms ha uh, having sufficient experience and knowledge of the uh, distribution they can open their own outlets if they lack knowledge then through middlemen next is services provided by the manufacturer in case of direct selling producers who intend to provide installation credit installation credit home delivery after sale service that will be possible so for those producers direct selling is better if the producers do not provide such services then it is better to go through middlemen desire for control of channels if the manufacturer wishes for more control on distribution then they should go for short channel or direct selling so these are the middle uh, um, company considerations and the last set the last set is the middleman condition so one is availability of desired middlemen or intermediaries uh, uh, who is uh, handling he is not handling competitive product he can be your uh, dealer who will operate according to the requirements of the manufacturer then uh, then you can select that person financial ability of the uh, is also important middlemen who are financially strong and can provide credit facility to the customer are uh, wanted by the producer uh, who can pay uh, on time to the manufacturer or pay advance to the uh, or loans so uh, uh, if the uh, they are financially well off the middleman is financially well off not only they can provide credit facility to the consumer but also advances and loans to the manufacturer so they are desired by the uh, big uh, by the manufacturers then attitude of middlemen whether they are like minded or likes uh, the marketing policies of the firm uh, whether they are demanding sole selling rights or a guarantee against fall in prices so if it matches with the company's consideration middleman consideration um, uh, middleman's wants then uh, then they, uh, naturally they will go for it otherwise uh, uh, such agreements will not materialize other factors are like 
the sales potential. Uh, you, uh, select the channel that has the greatest potential of sales volume over uh, the long run. Then the cost consideration. Comparison of cost of selling through alternate channels and the value generated by them. That is considered is considered. Then the customs and competition. Now manufacturers are compelled to use uh, the same channel of distribution which are traditionally used or are being used by the competitors. Like uh, locks are sold through hardware store uh, and it is custom of doing so. And competitors are also doing that. So you are also selecting hardware stores to sell the product then there are legal constraints also like government regulations uh, you can sell liquor and drugs through license store only so that is again another consideration that is again a middleman consideration distribution strategy so we discuss the factors which affect the selection of channel of distribution and uh, distribution as such and on the basis of different things like the type of the product, type of middleman, uh, the objectives of the organization, the organization can formulate its own distribution strategy. Uh, whether they want that the product should be available at every nook and corner of the country or they want an exclusive showroom for their product, all these are part of distribution strategy. So the first strategy is intensive distribution. Now, this aims uh, for, to get maximum exposure for the product by having it sold in every outlet where final customers might possibly look for it. Suppose we are talking about, say, a toothpaste manufacturer. You want that the toothpaste should be available in each and every retail outlet in your country so that whenever a, a customer demands for that uh, particular brand of toothpaste it should be available in that store so that kind of distribution is known as intensive distribution the product is distributed through as many outlets as possible product must be available where and whenever consumer needs it ultimate goal is maximum brand exposure and con consumer conven convenience because most of the time these are convenience goods only suitable for branded convenience goods such as toothpaste soap soft drinks food products since the product is sold intensively through all available outlets it is called intensive distribution intensive distribution is more successful if it is associated with large scale advertising by the company. So advertising will inform and persuade the customers and they will look for these products and they should be available in every store wherever possibly the customer will go. So this is intensive distribution. The second strategy is selective distribution. Here manufacturer chooses only a few middlemen to handle his product. Manufacturer selects a limited number of wholesalers and retailers and develops good working relationship with the selected channel members. He selects only such middlemen who are likely to sell his products in large quantities and will give maximum uh, importance to uh, your product. This is adopt adopted for specialty goods for which the customers have a branded preference. For example, for branded television, refrigerators, air conditioners. And these are available in say one locality, only one or two stores will be carrying that. And the customer is willing to make that kind of effort to go uh, to look for that particular store and buy the product from there. The good part is they will, this type of store, um, they, uh, they specializes in selling this type of product and they they will uh, they, they have the maximum knowledge in it and that's why best care will be taken in selling that product so this is selective distribution now a selective distribution requires considerable plan and thorough knowledge of the market in selecting the best distributors available concentrate efforts on them obtain a greater selling effort for uh, your product. The merit of uh, selective distribution is manufacturer can pick the best outlets and leave the unimportant and unprofitable ones. Good market coverage is possible. It gives a prestige to the product. More control over distribution of the product is possible. This gains better display of the product. And um, this is also the less, uh, less costly strategy because you are not reaching out to each and every outlet but few outlets in an area, in different areas. So this is selective distribution.
And the third, the last strategy is exclusive distribution. Here, manufacturer enters into a middleman or distributor uh, agreement, agreement with the middleman or distributor whom he grants ex exclusive right to sell his product in the territory specified in the agreement. The manufacturer agrees to not to sell to any distributor in the territory. This is known as exclusive selling agreement or there can be the distributor agrees not to handle or deal in any competing product and this is known as exclusive dealing agreement. Now, this is adopted for speciality goods which require installation or considerable investment in stocks or showroom. For example, automobiles and you will find uh, for expensive automobiles, luxury automobiles, there may be only one dealer in entire region and people are willing to make an effort to visit that region and buy from that showroom. The merit is it enhances the prestige to the product and allows a higher marker. The protection for, from competitors in the area is also available against price cuts and markdowns and distributors profit margin is protected by the manufacturer. So we can say distant, a, distant channels or middlemen perform functions like buying, sorting, assembling, risk taking, promotion, price, negotiation, providing credit, advances and information and so on. The factors affecting choice of distribution channel are market consideration, product, company and middleman consideration. The distribution strategies may be intensive, exclusive or selective depending upon the type of the product and other factors. Thank you students. So this was distribution decisions part 1 module 12 lecture 2.